welcome to episode 11 of the Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. It is by far and away our coldest episode to date, as seen by the fact that Murphy has abandoned his Tuesday vest today. Wrong. Oh, no, wrong. It's, it's just covered. It's underneath the hoodie. Oh, there we go. So for previous listeners, Murphy's gym vest has made an appearance on a couple of episodes so far. Tuesdays. Tuesday vest. In particular. Got to get the guns out for a Tuesday. Absolutely. No. How are you anyway, Murphy? I feel we skipped into the, the critique uh, of your yeah, clothing I'm, before I'm actually f- checking how you are. I'm doing great, thanks, but this weather's kind of it's getting me down, being so cold, waking up in the morning and being freezing. It was minus nine this morning in the car, yeah. and it's currently minus four. And I mean, you were also at Ravenscrig this morning for, for training, which has its own weather system, I think it's safe to say. Yeah, well, we went there, was it last week we went there? And they left the vents open, and it could have been colder inside than it was outside. But uh, fortunately, this week they managed to close the vents, so it was uh, still cold. But it's a lot better than training in the open air here. Good training this morning, though. Very good, yeah. Pretty slick. Boys are ready to go for the weekend. Um, it was obviously a shorter week this week, being at a Friday game. Um, so we kind of had to mix our physical day and with our performance day today. So. It was a different kind of schedule that we were running, but um, it was good. Everything, all the skills and all the plays are looking pretty sharp. You touched on Friday night, obviously, our first home European game against Perpignan. Tipkit still available at GlasgowWarriors.org. Coming off the back of our, our round one win away to Bath, the first time we've ever won at the Rec. Uh, obviously, ever. you were down there as a 24th man. Are you still 24th? Yeah, 20, I was, do we, do we yeah. keep going up? Is it 24th, no, no. 25th? 24th, 24th yeah, I was a travelling reserve, as they call it. Indeed. As as your position on the sideline, how just give us an overview. I mean, what, a, what an atmosphere at the end of the game. I know, hell of an atmosphere. See when Kyle made that tackle right at the end on that Joe Vulcan is singing just to get him into touch. And it was literally right in front of the bench. <laughs> we were going wild. Um, I think you can actually see Beast G run up to stay home with his like, big jacket on and <laughs> give him a slap on the back. But yeah, that was a pretty cool atmosphere because obviously it was like 90% Bath fans. Yeah. We were going wild on the touchline and everybody else was silent. So it was a, <laughs> yeah, it was, no, it was a great win. Um, chuff for the boys. Um, and I'm sure as you're about to allude on to, we've got a match winner in front of us. Well, I was just going to say, obviously you were talking about all the boys on the bench going wild. I think th- probably the one person in the entire group that wasn't going too wild was the man focusing on his next job, which is our newest warrior. Officially our newest warrior. Yeah. The latest Fraser. version. Gus, hey guys, you? Yeah. You 350. Thanks 350. for having me. Yeah, Warrior 350. Yeah, that. Uh, You're just gonna say that every time you introduce yourself to somebody. <laughs> Warrior 350, nice to meet you. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it was a great experience. Um, down at the wreck, incredible. The crowd was on top of you, and then got on for the last little bit to close out the game with the boys, and um, yeah, we did our job. Chucked a couple darts. Yep. I was gonna say, just talk us through that last one. Obviously, 79 minutes and 40 seconds, or whatever it was. You're in. 30 metres out from your own line, yeah, on your yeah. own throw. And then we also had Wilson had just come off injured as well, so Walter had come on into the yeah. pack. So yeah. um, we were going to go... a little bit of size to the pack. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to go six-man line it, but then obviously the big man doesn't jump very well. So uh, <laughs> we went down to five, and Richie obviously controlled it easy enough, made a good call, got them to go up when we were dummying, and then throw it on him unmarked and close out the game easy enough. And just another one of our debutants, Cameron Neild, the man, I mean, again, I've watched the replay several times and Sean Kennedy has a pass to Duncan Weir (laughs) and gives it to Cam Neild to kick (laughs) off the pitch. I mean, it's a heck of a kick from him as well. I don't think that's ever going to be an option we're going to run for on a regular basis. No, I didn't didn't even think about just kicking it off, you know, just into the stand. He forced it. (laughs) He put it right up in the air as well. I was was like, oh God, is this even going to go out? If that was a windy day, that could have come back into (laughs) into play. Um, oh, no. It was quite fitting for him to kick it off on his debut. Same yeah. as Jack Mann having yeah. a hell of a game. Big shift from, from both of those boys in the back row. Yeah. Gus, I know we were talking a little bit before about the fact you also had your, your family down at the wreck. It must have made it a little bit extra special for you. Yeah, definitely. My, da- um, my dad and my brother. My brother lives in London, so um, my dad flew down and they tra- travelled across, um, which made it even more special. Um, I used to come to Warriors games with my dad and my brother. Like My brother was at uni in Glasgow. So, um, yeah, we, I used to come down with him and watch, watch games all the time. So, um, yeah, it was really a great day. It made it really special. They were proud of me, so no, I was really happy. And then the next day, my dad got stuck at the airport for four hours. <laughs> Simon. Uh, flight got cancelled, so he got another day in London. But he's back home now, so <laughs> no, it was good. I was gonna say, we're talking about being perfect. Obviously, you guys go 
way back. Yeah, like, we do. Yeah, yeah. me and Murph, right from P1. Pretty or, much, uh, playing tag rugby. At Dundee, Dundee Eagles, and then... Um, was it actual tag or was it one of those games of tag rugby where accidental contact comes into play a few so, times? So, yeah, we were, we were a weird age, though, because we did contact for a while and then they changed it to, like, you weren't allowed to yeah. do contact. So then we were already doing it and then stopped for, like, a year or so in, like, primary four or something like that and then went back into it. Oh, okay, uh, fair enough. We had a undefeated season in primary... Six, six or something. Adam Mahican and Gus played <laughs> Play, uh, played scrum half. Played so scrum half back in the day. Yeah. And then I mean, you find the biscuit tin, and now he's yeah. hooker. <laughs> moved slowly down into <laughs> um, the front row. Yeah, I think but we glossed over the fact that you just admitted you had a Mahican oh, that Murphy part. Like some I had, hairstyles. Back that was in the my day. dad's fault. My dad was also the coach when uh, we had that undefeated season. Um, All right. So shout out to Neil. Family affair. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I've had some stinking haircuts over the years. <laughs> like I've had a full skinhead for majority of. I was gonna say you, you had for the like majority of my of the youth, I was full skinhead, and then every now and again when I went to spice it up, I went for a full <laughs> mohawk. And some it was, it was again it was. It was my always dad. closer to the end of the season. You would summer. Always, uh, yeah, summer. That's what. That's why going on go. holiday, you want to look good. So <laughs> I'd usually be uh, again. It was my dad that cut my hair, and <laughs> I think every so often. The mohawk you'd see would always start in the middle, and then, then it would be drifting down the left hand <laughs> side or the right hand side. But um, yeah, right. Gus and I go back a fair bit. Yeah, I mean the rest of this podcast is going to have to go a fair way to live up to your hairstyle choices, but I think we probably yeah, some make a crack on it. Anyway, for those of you who are first time listeners to the Squadcast, first of all, where have you been for the last eleven episodes? Secondly, we will remind you on how this works. Um, on the table in front of us, we've got our festive edition today. Um, it's our festive edition Glasgow Warriors Santa available from the Scottish Rugby Store at Marquis at Scotston and on Queen Street and indeed at BT Moneyfield as well if you happen to be a Glasgow Warriors supporter in the EH postcode in that hat we have a selection of finely prepared scenarios all of which relating to your Glasgow Warriors teammates Gus, your job as Warrior 350 and today's guest is to keep us entertained He's no already dived straight in there. I was going to ask how he, if he's ready, but he's, he's already... <laughs> well, this is an easy one. We've just been speaking about it. Which teammate do you know the longest? Indeed. Yeah. And where did we meet? So that's me and Murph. There we go. Um, <laughs> at <yeah>. Eagles. <laughs> yeah, at Eagles when we were younger playing rugby. Uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite non-playing member of Glasgow Warriors? Favourite non-playing member of Glasgow Warriors? Now, this can be literally anybody. This can be coach. This can be groundsman, kit man... John Manson, the team manager, if you want to get in his good books. <laughs> Anybody in the upstairs team, I'm not going to throw myself here because, you know, I'm not that kind of guy. Um, but, yeah, any, anybody at all there, guys. Um, I think on a whole, we're pretty lucky. We've yeah. got a decent background staff. I say background, they're very much the, in the forefront of it as well. But um, could always go for Stu Dow. He's an easy choice. Always uh, easy to Archibald. make fun of or have a good <laughs> chat with. He's also a very keen listener of the he podcast, is. so oh, be careful. He? So he'll enjoy that one. Stu Dow's a great shout. He does his job well. He sorts the boys Unless out. Unless it's driving, then he has an absolute nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> He's been sorting Dodge out. And, well, saying that, he sorted Rufus out with driving lessons and tests and Rufus passed, which is... Oh, did he? Which is <laughs> Congratulations, unbelievable. <Rufus>. Um, <laughs> all things considering, and I will never set foot in Rufus's car. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Stu Dow sorts the boys out pretty well and he's a, overall a, a, a great guy. Yeah. Loves his car racing as well. So if you does. ever speak to Stuart, ask him about his catering, he's just got a new one and he's really excited about it. He's like a child. But with uh, vans, he's not had so much good, uh, good luck. No. He's taken two tyres off two different vans. Yeah. One in South Africa and then... Oh, yeah. One, when we were, where were we going? Here? Inverness. Inverness. And he was driving the boys and the, and the tyre exploded. But um, I heard that he just kept driving on thinking it was nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> it was yeah. nothing. Turns out the whole wheel had left the rim. I don't want to be that guy sucking up to the coaches, so <laughs> I'm going to leave them out of that. Um, I mean... It could be, I mean, you could go to Al and just say, uh, try and angle for a pay rise. Like, yeah. be there. Yeah. New contract, please. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Gus, Next on up. you. Right. Who's got the best boot or shoe collection? Oh. I know mm. boots, 
Dunkey Weir. Yeah. He's got we've got lockers outside in the tunnel um in Scotston and he's taken up three of them full of boots. <laughs> there must be about ten different pairs of boots in there. All ranges, a, um Nike, Adidas, Asics, everything. He loves a classic. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot of boots. Um so he, definitely I would go for him yeah. for boots. Shoes I'm not too sure to be Dunk, honest. On the donkey point, he's not afraid about spending quid on a pair of boots. Yeah. He's bought like the ret like full on retro old preds from like two thousand and two and they're very smart. I'm very jealous because, unfortunately, they do not make them in my size. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Donkey's got the, probably the coolest boot collection. Yeah. I do remember we did a previous piece of content. I can't remember exactly where it was, but his answer to that was just classic Preds. Yeah. Which I feel probably sums him up on that front. Yeah. He is a very retro player. Yeah. But again, if he kicks a penalty like he did on Saturday, the carry on, penalty. Donkey. Yeah. Carry on. B yeah, uh, shoe collection. Shoe collection. I'm not sure who owns them all, but then... Tom in um, the academy, he's the plug. He'll go and buy you some if you want, and he'll research yeah, he and if you want a special. Yeah. Of Murphy, can you just have a go at saying his last name again? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's why I didn't say it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, Tom Banatvala, our academy Banavala, prop. I think yeah. it may have actually been edited out of last week's podcast, it but was. Murphy, during a recording, absolutely butchered that name. <laughs> yeah. I've probably still got the recording somewhere, so just stay tuned for we'll a best the of the squadcast. Yeah. yeah but no, so he is he selling them or is it is his own? So I or? think he'll go and find them if you he'll go source them like, for yeah, you. he'll source them for you. If you uh, if you got like, rate. a rare uh, <laughs> pair that you want or something like that, he's the man to go to. All right. And with PlayStations and stuff like that as well. Does he make them in your size, Murphy? I don't know. I'll have to I haven't actually approached him, but I'll need to cuz I'm in the market for a new pair. I've currently got a hole in these. I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, that's a pretty significant yeah, hole Yeah, so I've got a hole shoes. in my shoes, so <laughs> I was going to ask Santa for Christmas for a new pair, but um, I'm just going to source them myself at some point. Um, but I'd, I'm trying to think of some people that have actually got a collection. I know Sintu has been walking about in his new shoes of a brand that we can't mm -hmm. mention. Maybe. But um, Sorry, I think Gus mentioned about five brands of boots earlier, so it's oh, fine. Oh, you're not allowed to. No, oh. you're fine. Oh, that's my bad. Um, <laughs> So when we get into leisure wear kit, they were not allowed to mention anything. Uh, okay, <laughs> I get you. Um, I've seen Kevo have a few pairs of nice shoes. Um, I saw he had a pair sent here that he was keeping to sell or something like that. But yeah. um, No, I'm not sure. Who else? I know Xander just gets sent shoes like, <laughs> w like once every week. Um, speaking on the shoes... There's a bit of a shoe gate happening in what at Scottsdale just now. Shoe gate. There's a shoe gate. Um, Do tell. So Richie has had a pair of shoes ordered to <laughs> Scottsdale. Yeah. I don't know if it's his representative have sent him sent him this or he's ordered them himself. But he he got them sent here and then I think I, I don't know the exact details. Um, but he said that. Must have been a week later. He, he they had said they'd arrived, but he couldn't find them. And he went to go upstairs into the offices, found his box, and there was an old pair of shoes in there. <laughs> so he was like, "Right, what's going on here?" And then we're on a away trip. I can't remember where it was. Zebra away. Zebra away. Yeah. There it was. And who's who's wearing them? Big Al. Oh. Al Kellex worn his trainers to Zebra, <laughs> and not said a word to him. And Richie didn't know if he was having a laugh or if he's generally just. Decided to take his shoes, so I know Richie wasn't very happy about that. So that's the current shoe gate, and I'm unsure if he's got them back yet. Unsure yeah. if it's resolved. Bit of a bizarre one. I didn't, I didn't know that until somebody told me when we got yeah. back. But I was a bit. He was not happy. Yes. Moving on. Who would you most like to replace in a game? As in. So this question is: it's, you can pick any player, any position to get subbed on for. To, to be subbed on for in the closing stages of a game, which, which we go full high school rugby, where you can take your choice of positions. Um, well, now I think the safe option would be my own position. But if yeah, I but could choose <laughs> any option. position on the pitch to play, <laughs> it would be in the back, so I wouldn't have to be a forward. <laughs> yeah, too right. But, um, do you back yourself to carry on from your old scrum half days, or are well, you looking a bit further nine, out? Maybe a bit much running for nine, but um, I'd take a couple crash balls in the centre, probably. <laughs> um, I reckon ten would be good fun. I'd love to play ten. Just for a game. Put it on the toe. Yeah, 
like just taking just a kick. Just loved, one kick. I, I, yeah, I just love to kick in a game. Go on, tag for a long. Yeah. yeah, but to like just yeah to be able to like just pin cross fields and stuff. <laughs> that's a dream. Is Rufus prepared for you to try and pin cross fields too, and just I hope so. go wherever they he's go? Quick enough, yeah, like, he'll be able to, catch be able to get, get it anyway. So, um, but it's probably quite an apt question to ask, given that we touched on earlier Walter coming into the back row and. On Saturday, yeah, true. Uh, but again, I think we touched on the, the, the carry he made right to the death. Just a nice little bit of footwork and yeah, yeah, I think barreling he was through. Most important carry of the game. Yeah, yeah, I think he said he was he was choking to get a carry or get some sort of um, get his hands on the ball. Yeah, and he said he was like, "Move over, I'm 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 going to be here. Give it to me, <laughs> give it to me." And uh, yeah, he stepped up. That's honest, He was trying to score. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was going he was going the full eighty meters. Yeah. I reckon he could easily transfer to back row. Oh yeah, I think so. Well, I remember powerful for it. When See he, him in training today. Yeah, when he got um, drafted to Sterling for uh, Super Six, I remember all the boys just presumed that he was a big number eight. And when we were <laughs> they were setting up for a, a kickoff restart, and he was standing in the winger position, everybody was looking around like, "What is this boy doing? Where is he standing?" But um, on that, who's played in other positions? Fez. He came on again yeah, on the wing Leinster. against Leinster, so yeah. uh, and he would, he did all right. He got a few carries there, and uh, there was one when he wasn't in the backfield, but it's not his fault. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but um, um, he likes yeah. a good wee stint on in the wing. I, I, came on his debut, he came on and was was carrying a few balls in the wide channels. Yeah, as well. he was in the wide channels, just yeah. stomping down the wing. He likes that. Does does Fez? You yeah. very for those of us. Yeah. But no, I don't think there's been many other people, but. I remember back in the good old days, Fuzzy, Fuzzy playing on the wing, Chris Vizarra. center. Yeah, he used to always jumping in the backs if if needed. I remember, did a hell of a job. I remember just touching on the Sterling County point. I remember going to see it was I think it was County against Hoyk in a cup semi final that Fuzzy and Nico were both playing for Sterling, <laughs> and Nico did Nico things, and yeah, Fuzzy yeah. with about ten minutes to go just picked off an interception from about sixty meters out and was running in, and you're like, <laughs> aye, okay, you're an open side and you're playing like a fullback. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Fuzzy some, was some unreal. No. I remember the first time I ever played, I ever trained with Warriors. Um, I got a nice introduction from Fuzzy. Um, you know what, I remember this as well, actually. <laughs> it was at Ravenscraig yeah. as well. Um, just usual running through team plays. I was in the like opposition, so to speak. Um, and it was when Colleen Barretta was here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he got touched or scragged and he was obviously meant to go down but then he passed me the ball I was just off his shoulder and I got absolutely levelled by Fuzzy like, <laughs> like full on <laughs> absolutely took you out it I was, was like horizontal I remember I was I think I was on like, I was at the sideline like waiting to switch in and I remember seeing it and Murphy just got absolutely levelled with yeah. legs in the air yeah. and I was like oh my god here we go <laughs> all the wind left my body and I remember standing up, like trying to catch my breath, and Fuzzy's like, "That's why you take a touch when you're touched." And I was like, "I was not happy with Kaleem after he passed me that ball." <laughs> Which teammate are you inviting to your dinner party? How do we think? Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like the safe option for the pair of you is just each other. Yeah, it could be easy, but we've yeah. been the road. We've had plenty of dinner parties together when we yeah. lived together, so um, spice it up. No, no offense, Murphy. <laughs> Change it up a little bit. Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> Who would you like to? Who would I like out the squad? Should I think who's like a good cook? Who would cook me a, a good meal? If I was uh, going to this. Is it Domingo or Seb? Oh, really? One of them is a really good cook and one doesn't cook at all. But I can't remember <laughs> which one it is. Um, I think Seb is the chef and Domingo just leaves his missus to the cooking. I would probably go... Seba, just but Argentinian. Yeah, well, if you go Argentinian, I would take. I well, I would go for Enrique and hope that his missus brings oh, some yeah. pastries. That is a good point. That was yeah. dangerous last season. Um, we may want to elaborate on that because people are just going to wonder what yeah. on earth we're talking about there. But yeah. I don't know. Was it after wins or was it just after? No, Enrique. Just... So Enrique's now wife um, yeah. is an unbelievable. Is it bacon? Yeah, bacon. Yeah, she's a. She's but a she would do like classic Argentinian yeah, like tra- like traditional pastries and, like and dolce de leche. Yeah, oh, they were so and good. It was 
unbelievable. He would bring them and just put them in the kitchen and boys would just... They would disappear. Yeah, yeah. they would go on very quickly. I remember but. Killian wasn't very happy. Arson C wasn't very happy when he saw about three boxes turn up in the kitchen and then vanish within <laughs> 20 minutes. But yeah, that was unbelievable. So yeah, that's a great show. Argentinians all seem to be yeah pretty good culinary skills. Um, what's it? I was I'm trying to one like figure out who's got like a nice foreign cuisine like Australians, not really. Barbecues. Kiwis. You go South Africa. You could get a, a braai with the Safas. You could go Nathan and JP and Sintu. Yeah. And Allendale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. JP talk about it a lot. Yeah. Him and Nathan, I think they've had, well, when it was sunny, not now, obviously, but they oh, used to... Cable or Shug. Oh, as yeah. Well. They used to um, have a braai quite a bit, but... Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to go Seba. You choose who you want to choose. I'm going to go Enrique, just get those pastries back. They were amazing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We've got time for another one? I'll go one more. Nice. And then that will be you boys off into the wintry wonderland. <laughs> for the rest of the day. <laughs> Who has the smelliest kit bag? <laughs> smelliest kit bag? Uh, Name and shame time. I'm going to drop a minute here. <laughs> oh. Alex Samuels, the man, not, he's not consistently always got a smelly kit bag, but for the last couple of sessions, he'd forgot. We have to wear our, um, if we're not wearing our contact jerseys, you have to wear a GPS vest underneath your T-shirt yep. for, so the GPS doesn't, like, move around and you get the right stats and he forgot to wash his gps bib twice and oh it was god the most disgusting smelling thing in the world but consistently he's not smelly no but he's a messy like his area yeah his area in the changing room is messy you don't want to be sitting next to him because you'll be taking his kit home all the time <laughs> he just throws it in everywhere but um yeah i'd probably say him yeah everyone I can't really think of anybody off the top of my head that has a smelly bag. I mean, that's good. Um, in a way. Yeah. Not for this question, but in no, general life true. and um, sanitize, sanitation. Yeah, was everyone good. seems pretty well drilled in terms of getting the washing done. Um, yeah. That would yeah, be that. No, <laughs> no. I mean, it's a, it's a unanimous decision by virtue of the fact that... that you was the, voted, you, you there. voted Alex anyway. Yeah, it so. was just... Uh, I, <laughs> I feel bad now. It was just the one off. Yeah, you really need to get that off it your chest not, as well. It was, it was literally just two sessions where he, he even admitted he was like, I was about to yes. say a naughty word there, <laughs> but oh no, I've uh, forgot to wash my GPS vest. Yeah. He knew it and he told everyone and we were all like, oh Christ. <laughs> but, would you admit it or would you just try and keep it quiet? Oh, that depends how bad it, it is. <laughs> yeah, it really depends how bad it is. But yeah. Probably admit it. I'd just be like, oh, "Oops, yeah, <laughs> did an oopsie." Just one up. And on that, I, I don't even know. On that note, I don't know how yeah, I would yeah. describe that note. But on that note, that will do us for episode eleven of the Squadcast. Thank you very much to both Gus and Murphy. Thank you for having me. Bye. See you both. I mean, I'll see you both before this week, but see you both on Friday for Friday night, eight p.m. <laughs> as we take on Perpignan in round two of the Challenge Cup. As we said at the top of the show, tickets still available at GlasgowWarriors.org. Go buy your tickets and make some noise and help us keep warm because it's going to be a cold one. Anyway, we'll be back at this time next week for what will be our last one before the probably the new year, I would imagine, actually, just with the way the Christmas Christmas break falls. Um, So stay tuned for that one. But yes. Christmas special, is it? Hey, stay tuned. You never know. We'll find out. Anyway, he's been Murphy Walker. He's been Angus Fraser. I've been Craig Wright. And this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast. (laughs) 